Prithviraja III popularly known as Prithviraj Chauhan was a Rajput warrior king of the Chauhan clan of rulers who established the strongest kingdom in Rajasthan. He ruled the territory of Sapadalaksha, with his capital at Ajmer in present-day Rajasthan. He reigned from 1177 to 1192 CE. He is famous for his fight against the invasion of Muhammad Ghori who aimed to conquer several parts of India. Prithviraj was born to the Kahamana king Sumshvara and queen Karpradevi, a Kalachuri princess in Gujarat where his father Sumshvara was brought up at the Chalukya court by his maternal relatives. According to Prithviraja Vijaya, Prithviraj was born on the twelfth day of the Jyesht month. The text does not mention the year of his birth, but provides some of the astrological planetary positions at the time of his birth, calling them auspicious. According to the medieval biographies, Prithviraj was educated well. He mastered six and fourteen languages according to Prithviraja Vijaya and Prithviraj Raso respectively but the scholars think that it might be an exaggeration. Both the texts agree that he was particularly proficient in archery, in well-versed in history, mathematics, medicine, military, painting, philosophy, and theology according to Prithviraj Raso. When Prithviraja II died, Prithviraj Chauhan's father Sumshvara was crowned as the next Kahamana king. It was at this time Prithviraj went from Gujarat to Ajmer. When Prithviraj was around 11 years old, Sumshvara died in 1177 CE. Even though he was a minor at the time, he ascended the throne with his mother as the regent. But the Hamra Mahakavya claims that Sumshvara himself installed Prithviraj on the throne, and then retired to the forest. However, this is doubtful. Since he was just a minor, his mother managed the administration with help of a regency council. Kadambaveza, the chief minister of the kingdom during this period was an able administrator and soldier who devoted his life to the young king. He was responsible for all the military victories during the early years of Prithviraja's reign. But sadly, Kadambaveza was later killed by Prithviraj. After finding him in the apartment of the his favorite concubine Karnati, Prithviraj killed him. This was stated in the Prithviraj Raso. But the Prithviraja Prabanda claims that a man named Pratapa Simha conspired against the minister, and convinced Prithviraj that the minister was responsible for the repeated Muslim invasions and this was the reason why he was put to death. As both these claims seem historically inaccurate, the more historically reliable Prithviraja Vijaya does not mention any such incident. According to historian Dashratha Sharma, Prithviraj assumed actual control of the administration in 1180 CE. After assuming control, Prithviraj suppressed a revolt by his cousin Nagarjuna and recaptured Gadapra which is possibly the modern Gurgaon, a city located in Haryana. According to Prithviraja Vijaya, a garland made of the defeated soldiers' heads was hung across the Ajmer fort gate. Then Prithviraj led a war against Chandalas. The Madampur inscriptions from Prithviraja's reign claim that he laid to waste Jejakabukti, which was ruled by the Chandala king Paramardi. Prithviraja's invasion of the Chandala territory is also described in the later folk legends, such as Prithviraj Raso, Paramal Raso, and Alharaso. Sometime before 1187 CE, the Chalukya king of Gujarat, Bhima II and Prithviraj were at war. Prithviraj Raso provides some details about the Kahamana Chalukya struggle. According to it, both Prithviraj and Bhima wanted to marry Ichchini, the Paramara princess of Abu. But Prithviraj however, married her and that was the cause of the war between those two kings. G. H. Boja treat this account as historically unreliable. The Raso also mentions that Prithviraj's uncle Kanhadeva had killed seven sons of Bhima's uncle Sarangadeva. Bhima invaded the Kahamana kingdom to avenge these murders and killed Prithviraja's father Samshvara, capturing Najar in the process. Prithviraj recaptured Najar and defeated and killed Bhima. The various historical evidence suggests that the reign of Bhima II lasted nearly half a century after Prithviraja's death and that Bhima II was a child at the time of Samshvara's death, and therefore, could not have killed him, tells us that the Raso account is historically false. 
Despite these discrepancies, there is some evidence of a battle between the Kahamanas and the Chalukyas at Najer. Two inscriptions found at Charla village near Bikaner commemorate the death of Mohil soldiers at the Battle of Najer in 1184 CE. The Mohils are a branch of the Chauhans and it is possible the inscriptions refer to the battle described in Prithviraj Raso. Partha Parakramavaya Yoga, a text written by the ruler Dharavarsha, Chandravati Paramara, describes Prithviraja's night attack on Abu. This attack, according to the text, was a failure for the Kahamanas. It probably happened during the Gujarat campaign of Prithviraj. In the course of his aggressive campaigns, Prithviraj came into conflict with Jaychandra, the Gahadavala ruler of Kannaj. According to a legend mentioned in Prithviraj Raso, Prithviraj fell in love with Jaychandra's daughter, Samyajita which led to a rivalry between the two kings. Prithviraj refused to participate in the Rajasuya ceremony conducted by King Jechand or Jaychandra and refused to acknowledge him as the supreme king. Jechand's daughter Samyajita fell in love with Prithviraj after hearing about his heroic exploits, and declared that she would marry only him. A Swayamvara ceremony for his daughter was held by Jechand, but he did not invite Prithviraj. A Swayamvara ceremony was a ceremony where various kings and princes are invited by a king whose daughter would choose a king or prince present there to be her husband. Since he was not invited, Prithviraj marched to Kannaj with a hundred warriors and eloped with Samyajita. Two-thirds of his warriors sacrificed their life in fight against the Gahadavala army, allowing him to escape to Delhi with Samyajita. In Delhi, Prithviraj became so obsessed with his new wife that he started spending most of his time with her. He started ignoring the state affairs, which ultimately led to his defeat against Muhammad Ghori. Prithviraj's predecessors had faced multiple raids from the Muslim dynasties that had captured the northwestern areas of the Indian subcontinent by the 12th century. By the late 12th century, the Girid dynasty controlled the territory to the west of the Kahamana kingdom. Muhammad Ghori had captured many territories like Multan and invaded Gujarat while Prithviraj was still a child. The power of the Girid army never stopped growing and Muhammad Ghori is considered as one of the important figures who paved the way for the start of Muslim rule in India. Prithviraja Vijaya mentions that the activities of the Girid army were like Rahu to the Kahamana kingdom. In Hindu mythology, Rahu swallows the sun which had caused a solar eclipse. Muhammad later shifted his base from Ghazna to Punjab, and made attempts to expand his empire eastwards, which led to a conflict between him and Prithviraj. Muhammad sent an ambassador to Prithviraj, asking him to abandon belligerence and pursue the path of rectitude. Prithviraj rejected the proposal and thus Muhammad decided to wage a war against Prithviraj. The medieval Muslim writers mention only one or two battles between the two rulers. However, the Hindu and Jain writers state that Prithviraj defeated Muhammad multiple times. The First Battle of Tarain During 1190-1191 CE, Muhammad Ghori invaded the Kahamana territory, and captured Tabarhinda. On hearing this, Prithviraj marched towards Tabarhinda with his feudatories, including Govindaraja of Delhi. His army comprised of 200,000 horses and 3,000 elephants. Muhammad Ghori's army and Prithviraja's army fought each other and Prithviraja's army decisively defeated the Gurids. Muhammad Ghori was injured and forced to retreat. Even when they started retreating, Prithviraj didn't make any attempts to pursue them, not wanting to invade hostile territory or misjudge Ghori's ambition. Tabarhinda went back to the control of Prithviraj. The Second Battle of Tarain After the first battle, Prithviraj made only little preparations for any future clash with Muhammad of Gore and spent most of his time in doing other things, neglecting the affairs of the state. But Muhammad Ghori didn't waste his time. He wanted to avenge his defeat. So he gathered a well-equipped army of 120,000 select Afghan, Tajik and Turkic horsemen over the next few months of the first battle. With the help of Vijayaraja of Jammu, he marched towards the Kahamana kingdom via Multan and Lahore. 
Because of his wars against many neighboring Hindu kings, Prithviraj didn't have any allies he could count on. Nevertheless, he managed to gather a large army to counter the Gurids which comprised of over 100 Rajput rulers, war elephants, cavalrymen and foot soldiers. Prithviraj wrote a letter to Muhammad Ghori stating that no harm would come to him and his army if he decides to return to his own country. He agreed to a truce until he received an answer from his brother. He then planned an attack against the Kahamanas. After a bloody battle between them, the Kahamanas started to lose the battle. Prithviraj himself tried to escape on a horse, but was pursued and caught near the Sarasvati fort according to Taj al -Masar. Other texts like Prithviraj Raso and some Jain texts have different takes on the downfall of Prithviraj. Most medieval sources state that Prithviraj was taken to the Kahamana capital Ajmer, where Muhammad planned to reinstate him as a Gurid vassal. Sometime later, Prithviraj rebelled against Muhammad, and was killed for treason. Various coins were found bearing the names of both Prithviraj and Muhammad which serves as an evidence to this theory. After Prithviraj's death, Muhammad installed Prithviraj's son Govindaraja on the throne of Ajmer which further supports this theory. Even though he was defeated in the second battle, Prithviraj is seen as a great ruler and conqueror. His empire included parts of present-day Rajasthan, Uttarakhand, southern Punjab, northern Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh and western Uttar Pradesh in India. Recently, a Bollywood movie called Samrat Prithviraj based on the epic poem Prithviraj Raso was released. If you are interested, check it out. What do you think about Prithviraj Chauhan and his reign? Comment down your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tap the thumbs up icon and share it to your friends and family. Hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video or short. I will see you again in a new video with a new topic to explain. Thanks for watching.